So in past videos, we've had the chance to check out the Hegel H390 and even had the opportunity to take their flagship stack for a spin as well. In both cases, I walked away digging their sound signature and even more, discovering that both amps seem to share a similar goal when it comes to how they sound. When cracking open the all white H120 and firing it up for the very first time, I felt like I was cheating on my girlfriend. And this chick, well, she's been good to me, but man, if I'm being honest, she can be a real handful. Before we dive in, this video is being sponsored by Safe and Sound. And while they are not responsible for sending me the H120, they do carry Hegel products and love what Hegel brings to the table. With lifetime, yes, that's right, lifetime technical support, flexible payment options, and a large selection of Hegel models to choose from, including the H390 and flagship goodies that we have already spent time with, Safe and Sound will be thrilled to get you up and running in a quick hurry. All the links that you need are down below, and please do tell them that Ron sent you. They are awesome to work with and will get you rocking out in no time. Taking a look at the H120 from the front, just like their other amp designs, there isn't much going on to chat about. To the left, there is one knob which controls the source selection. Smack dab in the middle, there is an LCD display that gives us the basic information such as input selection, sampling rate for digital, and of course, volume level. Speaking of volume, to the right, there is another knob for doing exactly that, turning up the amplifier. Also, turning the amplifier on and off can be done by pressing a button that's tucked away and hidden on the bottom of the amplifier near the front. One cool feature that the H120 does offer that we haven't seen in the amps that we've already checked out is they do have a headphone output for those who want to dabble in late night listening sessions without waking up the neighbors. While we're chatting about features and operations, the 120 does come with an all metal remote that not only looks great and feels nice in the hands, but gives quick access to anything that you would need, including killing the LCD screen altogether for a dark mode. Volume up and down, mute, input selections, you guys get the idea. Taking a look at the 120 on the business end, smack dab in the middle, there are five-way binding posts for speakers. To the left side, you will find single-ended RCA outputs followed by two banks, one offering a pair of unbalanced RCA inputs and the other being an XLR input. On the right side of the amp, you will find another bank offering all of your digital inputs, including coaxial, optical, USB, and ethernet for networking connections. Last to the right of this bank, you will find a standard IEC inlet for power. Like the other Hegel amplifiers that we've already checked out, the H120 does offer their sound engine too. This technology works a lot like noise canceling headphones. Inside the 120, there is a computer inside which samples what comes in and then compares it to what goes out. This computer then subtracts the difference it detects in distortion and brilliantly adds it back to the music, but in reverse phase. The result, pretty simple. Music unleashed and free from almost all errors made by the amplifier. In addition to the Sound Engine 2 platform, the humble looking H120 is actually quite future proof and it does come ready for Rune along with built in Apple AirPlay. Toss in Spotify Connect, UPnP streaming, and while we're at it, Control 4 ready, and presto, we are off to the races. Featuring 75 watts into eight ohms, the H120 sits right in that comfort area of being able to drive the vast majority of the speakers out there. And while I never had one issue with this amp driving anything that I laid my hands on, there is a couple of things that I noticed that I would imagine probably has more to do with its voicing rather than its power capabilities. So yeah. Let's talk about my new girlfriend. Summarizing the overall presentation of this amplifier, it sounds lively, it sounds exciting, and sometimes forward 
or certainly more of a front row experience. Peeling back those observations in greater detail, the amplifier's top end, starting with upper mid-range, does sound to me as if it is leading the charge on the amplifier. Details and clarity, especially at lower volumes, are very easy to discern, and most of the information, let's say above 1K, can be a little bit harsh when paired with a lively speaker or a speaker that already emphasizes those particular frequencies. While I do talk a fair amount of smack about Klipsch for this exact reason, I'm just gonna say this right now so I can sleep well tonight. That kind of vibrant or lively or forward sound would be the last place that I would be going to if I was gonna be buying this amplifier and pairing it with something that makes sense. Instead, going with a speaker that's truly neutral or even warm would be a better pairing and I would imagine would temper a lot of the things that I've noticed about the H120's voicing and overall presentation. Cymbal hits do sound real, but also come with the consequence of real might not be what you are actually after. Crashes and splashes can be a little bit forward and edgy at higher volumes, and I would imagine in rooms without a decent amount of absorption might be asking for trouble with that kind of a top-end performance. Now, at lower or moderate volumes, let's say as low as 70 decibels, I notice that a lot of these details actually shine through in the music, making it much easier to listen to information track after track, and it got me thinking, this exciting voicing could be a positive thing for folks who just keep the volume at bay. Acoustic guitars, namely the top end of acoustics, are also very detailed, and I would imagine that folks who are listening to intimate performances will appreciate being able to lock on to a lot of the subtle and fine details hidden away in the recording. Only when the performance changes from simple or the acoustic is swapped for an electric and the volume starts to creep up that I find that this tilt and excitement or top end to sound a little bit too much for me in longer listening sessions. The mid-range on the H120 does seem to follow suit of this exciting front row experience as well. And while this trait can be fun, dynamic, and even lead to an exciting performance, I want you to be prepared that descriptions like robust, or meat on the bones, or body in the music might be sacrificed as a trade-off in this particular exchange. As far as I can tell, both male and female vocals also sounded detailed and they stuck to this exciting, fun, or detailed sound that the H120 certainly offers. If sibilance is a deal breaker for you, I'm gonna be blunt in saying, I can hear that trait poking out in the music with the H120 when I'm pairing it with more exciting speakers. So again, going back to the caution about the kind of pairing that you're gonna be doing, it's your wallet, but don't say that I didn't warn you if you insist on pairing this up with a brighter speaker. I think you're really asking for it. Baritones, on the other hand, do sound quite nice. I gotta say that having a little bit more emphasis on the details of their voice can be really intoxicating and quite the bonus. In fact, I enjoyed how the H120 rendered most male vocal tracks, and I think that most listeners would find having that type of resolution to play with in the lower mid-range is almost always a good thing. As we move away from mid-range into mid-bass and bass, this is where things got a little bit confusing for me, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm just gonna rip off the Band-Aid right here. The bass tone and texture on the H120 is great. Hearing bass notes and the clarity in the bass frequencies, no problem at all. In fact, I really enjoyed how tight and precise every single kick drum sounded, and I loved how easy I could track the sound of a bass guitar. So, what is the issue here? Well, 
Anyone know where the heck the cojones are on this amplifier? I mean, where is that wall-crushing, heavy-handed hit that blew my mind with the 390? I know this isn't close to the power of that monster, but let's not dismiss this observation so quickly. I've been around the block and I know what I'm doing here. Even at moderate volume levels with easy to drive speakers, I'm just not getting that, that, well, what I thought was the Hegel sound, that massive, deep, and powerful bass that can be used to remodel walls or shake Sarah's clothes off on command. I don't know, guys. Hear me out. It's not that the bass is wimpy or weak. It's not. But man, combined with a detailed, exciting, and fun presentation, this part of the amp's performance just left me scratching my head and it left me wanting more. Now look, the H120 does offer variable outputs which certainly could be used for subwoofers. So you could actually make up for this with subs, but if that's not part of your plans and you don't want to invest in subwoofers, then I'm just gonna stick with my gut and I'm gonna say it like it is. With an exciting top-end presentation and mid-range to follow, the 120 is an amplifier to me or to my ears. It can sound a little bit thinner than what I expected and I really wish that we had something below the belt to balance the sound signature of this amplifier. Soundstage, on the other hand, on the amplifier is great, but again, not super deep or wide sounding like it's Big Brothers and to my ears, again, sounds more like that front row presentation, which almost always happens when we have a lively or tilted sound in places that emphasizes top end or the upper mid range. So closing out this review of the 120, I have to remind myself that, you know what? It's just not for me. This isn't, after hearing the 390 and above, those are the amps that Ron would be after. If I was investing in the Hegel sound, I heard that and I was like, the blood's in the water, those are the ones that I'm going for. There's nothing wrong with this amplifier. I wanna make that part clear. But having heard what Hegel is doing up above, if that is anywhere within your price bracket, that's the direction that I would be going if I was you. Um, with this guy, by all means, if you are anything like the many, many, many people that I've taken the time to read user reviews and feedback that have gone for the 120, look, they freaking love it. And a lot of the things that they are saying, it mirrors exactly what I'm saying, is what they appreciate about it is how fun it is and how lively it is and how energetic it is. And it's quick to respond with all that detailed information. It is all of that. Make no mistake, it is. But I, I'm the kind of reviewer that is like, yep, yep, I'm trekking with you. We're hearing the same amp, but since I've been in this position of hearing above it, I really need you to know that I don't think that this is anything like the 390 and above. I don't think it is anything close to what I experienced in that amp. And so I want to temper expectations that I'm not going to call this a baby 390. It's not. And if you are to try to close that gap, you're going to be investing in subs and I, I just like the simplicity of the 390 just giving everything to you, all of it, the whole enchilada. And with the 120, not quite. So that's that. That's that. It's how I feel. Review set in stone. I cheated on my girlfriend. You. And I, I, I need to make a phone call to my ex and see if she'll take me back. The 390 is the Hegel to get, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, or above. I gotta try the 590. Hegel, I gotta try the 590. I need to try it out. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.